The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Stephen Sharp, and Stephen is the Executive Director of Food from the Heart. Welcome, Stephen. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. Oh, gosh. You folks are doing such important work in our community. Yeah, it and really I'm... is a, a special, special mission. Yeah, so please tell us all about what you're doing and how you started and all that. Yeah, it's actually how we started is kind of an inter interesting story. It was 28 years ago. Gosh. And I was actually working at the AIDS Project here in Santa Barbara. Uh, working in every capacity and we had just opened up a food pantry for clients of ours to come in and shop and a woman came in she had founded this New York bagel factory here in Santa Barbara she and her then husband and um, they had sold it and she said I have time on my hands now and I would like to cook meals for your patients your AIDS clients so wow. she started cooking out of her home oh, and gosh. bringing them to us. And we had a big refrigerator in the, in the food pantry and she would just put them in the refrigerator. And then our clients, when they came, could take a fresh prepared meal home with them. Wow. And it just little by little, she grew. She started using commercial kitchens where she could find them. And then of course the AIDS population transitioned when the medications mm -hmm. kicked in. Sure. And so then she decided to actually make the focus on individuals who are battling an illness or mm. recovering from major surgery and live alone. Oh. So they're all low income, very low income, most of them, and they live alone and they are basically homebound. They don't get around much because they're very ill or they're recovering from, from some sort of really significant surgery. So we ensure that they are well fed and we also believe that we help them um, manage other expenses such as their medications, their mm -hmm. rent, their, they don't have to worry about their food bill as much because we prepare enough food to last them for a good five days. Oh really? Prepared meals. It's as if you called a restaurant and ordered eight things off of the menu. Yeah. So, so is that your main focus, your clientele, people who are by themselves and recovering? Yes. Yeah. Or recovering or, or battling an illness of some sort. So, uh, so that is our, and they're all low income, that, and that is our singular focus, is low income individuals who are housebound, homebound, okay. live alone, and um, are managing a, a major illness. So how do they find out about you? We get a lot of referrals from other agencies. Oh. So places like Hospice of Santa Barbara, uh, Cottage Health, the Cancer Center oh, knows about us. Of course, of so course. So we're constantly having social workers calling us saying, I have a, uh, we have a client here, who we, a patient here who we think is a good candidate for you. Or we have an elderly woman who lives alone and just broke her hip and she's going to be needing help for maybe a month until she gets back on her feet. And so that would be an example. We also get private doctors who call us. And believe it or not, because we work with low income, places like the housing authority might oh. call us and say, we have someone living in one of our units, our complexes, and they are having an issue. They're battling an illness or needing some, some support uh, nutritionally. So that would be another example of, of how. And then of course, people learn about us and will say, my neighbor has been getting uh, food from you and um, I am dealing with an issue right now and wonder if I could could receive food for maybe three weeks. And so is there a charge? Oh, uh, no, no mm -hmm. charge. It's free of charge to all of the people that we, we feed. Wow. And, and we, it's 156 a week. 156? 56 bags of food. That you prepare That we prepare week. and deliver. So we have, we're, we have two part-time staff. Oh, golly. And just that's it. And then we have a roster of about 120 active volunteers. Gosh. And 
So in any given day, we prepare Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning. And I was just counting last week. Tuesday, we had uh, 21 people helping, volunteers. And Wednesday, we had 18. So th the numbers are very much around that, that quantity every week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then we have separate volunteers who are our drivers oh. who show up Wednesday around 11 a.m. Uh -huh. and pick up their route. And so they always have the same route. And so they come in and pick up eight bags because they know that's their route. And, and we have a volunteer who's our board treasurer, Kathy. And believe it or not, Kathy is actually our client referral person and our driver coordinator. Wow, wait. As a volunteer, we have a phone number and that phone goes direct to Kathy's cell phone. So she Gosh. answers every call for Food From The Heart as a volunteer and then when we have someone call and ask to be a client, Kathy will talk to them. We have a form, we fill oh. out a qualification form. And then what we have a really interesting system where Kathy sends all the drivers with their bags and she generally has an idea how many extra bags she'll have that week for maybe five, but she always waits till they're all gone, all out. Uh -huh. And then, um, then she calls up these new potential clients mm. and says, hey, I've got a bag this week. Can I take it over to you? So every single client is visited by Kathy first before entering our program. And she can tell, I mean, she can tell if someone is actually not needing our services uh -huh. quite as much. She may go to someone's house and it's obvious there are three people living there and she just, does, we don't feel that's quite the, the, yeah, yeah. the reason. If they have other support people living with them, that's really not exactly how we, we, we do this. So, so every client is visited by Kathy and then if she feels they qualify, which most often they do, she will assign them to one of the drivers. And then when the driver comes that next week, she says, oh, I know you had eight bags, but I have a new client for you. Here's their information, their address. And so every driver has a very specific section of town, the east side, the uh -huh. west side, downtown. And that, that's, how we, that's how we do it. And, and so it's 156 per week. And that's how we know every week it's exactly 156 because Kathy always has a few extras and then she handles delivering oh, those. Gosh. So it's never more or less than exactly 156 bags. So give me an example of what goes into a typical bag. Yeah. So we do an entree for, uh, and the entree consists of a protein, usually a starch and vegetables. So okay. we might do chicken piccata over some pasta and then some really uh, nice green, maybe some broccoli and carrots. Mm -hmm. So they get this entree and then they also get a casserole. We, we make a, a casserole that's it's about that big, mm -hmm. half of a sheet of, of a nine by 13. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, mac and cheese would yeah, be one we yeah. would make or, or a pasta primavera, something like yeah. that. So a nice casserole. And then we also hand make soup. Mm -hmm. So we do a fairly large container of soup for them, fresh soup, and we do a fresh green salad. Oh. Um, and with everything we do, it's important that it look really attractive as if you got it from a fine restaurant because our clients have diminished appetites often. Oh. So we like them to see it and say, wow, that looks really delicious. So it's a big priority for us to make sure the food oh. looks beautiful when it's presented to them. And then we also do a cold deli style salad, mm. maybe a bean salad, mm -hmm. a five bean salad or something like that. and. Um, and then we uh, do a little dessert cake. We have a, a little loaf cake that we make every week. We have a volunteer, Judy, who hand makes the cakes every week, oh 156 cakes. And same with our salad dressing. Our volunteer, Anne, every Tuesday makes a different salad dressing. We don't buy big containers of it and then pour it in. Yeah. The, in uh -huh. the, we, she always makes it fresh every week. So the cake, and then we include a bag of fruit and a bag of bread, of rolls. All right, so then where do you typically get your food to cook? And yeah, to... we, most of it we do actually purchase. We uh. have an account with Giordano's, a local uh -huh. company, and also uh, Pacific Produce. So we receive the bulk of it through them. We have to buy it in bulk. When we can, we get uh, staples from the food bank. Mm. They'll let us know, oh, we have a lot of eggs right now, so oh. we'll go get, you know, 30 dozen eggs that'll last us for a few weeks. And then um, we do get some donations. There's a, a, a 
a wholesale bread company out in Goleta called Ethnic Breads, uh -huh. and they donate bread rolls and things nice. to us every week. And then Vaughn's out in Goleta also will donate what is maybe nearing expiration date and they uh -huh. need to remove it from the shelf. And so every week we, we get four or five boxes of pastries and other goodies from from Vons that we could, we do as an add-on to the to our client bags. Wow! So that and, and you have a com commercial kitchen. You're still we using. We do. Yeah, it, it's the Trinity Lutheran Church oh. at, at the corner of Foothill uh -huh. and the Coombra. They have a very large fellowship hall and a, actually a really nice commercial kitchen. And several years ago, we invested in a walk-in refrigerator uh. and a walk-in freezer that the church allowed us to install. Uh, just That's off the back of, of that, yeah. And so now we can. We used to have to store it in multiple places, and every week go oh. grab all of our supplies yeah. in various other kitchens, churches. But now we can keep everything ourselves. And the freezer is invaluable because oh, yeah. uh, we had a the commercial fisherman of Santa Barbara was donating fish to us uh -huh. uh, during the pandemic. I believe uh -huh. they got a grant from FEMA or something like that. And so we were getting, you know, eighty pounds of of filet of sole or something like that yeah and so we were able to put it in the freezer until we could use yeah. it maybe two weeks later when our menu was built around it so wow yeah. so um you mentioned the pandemic so how did that impact you yeah so in our we're 28 years old mm -hmm. and in the 28 years we've never missed a week because we know how important it is to our clients yeah so it's even if something really difficult comes up, we find a way to make sure that we can prepare uh. the bags of food. And so during the pandemic, what we did is we actually are very fortunate that we have a large space. So we were able to put each volunteer at their own table, uh. six feet apart. And actually health department regulations mandate that everyone washes their hands when they arrive and wears gloves and an apron and then between tasks you take you have to take off your disposable gloves rewash your hands and put on new gloves oh wow for fear of cross contamination sure and this literally means if you're cutting chopping potatoes and then going to carrots you still have to go wash your hands wow put on new gloves and so we mandated masks everyone worked at their own dedicated round 60 inch round table and so we had social distancing and masks and we also made absolutely certain that our volunteers knew that if they were not comfortable coming in, do not come in. That that was not an issue for us. Yeah. So we ended up with actually a pretty good core pared down team. We scaled back. I think we eliminated the casserole for about oh. four months when we first were getting mm -hmm. going because we weren't sure we had the human capacity to, sure. to handle what we were doing before with 18 to 20 volunteers in there every day. So. Yeah. But we managed it actually really, really well. Never stopped. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. So this woman that you were telling us about earlier who started cooking and mm -hmm. found a commercial kitchen and I don't know. Is she the founder? Yes, Evelyn Jacob is the founder. Oh, okay. That's, that's our, Evelyn is our founder. And she does come in still every week and visits us. And if we're shorthanded, she'll jump in and help. Uh, so oh. we usually see her at least once a week. To come in and check in and see how things are going so that is great yeah well, yeah good it's, for her we're really lucky that she's here and active and just fantastic oh man so let's see um if somebody wants to volunteer let's say they're watching this and they say oh that sounds like something i'd like to volunteer for they can go on your website and find out how to do that tell yeah. us about your volunteers yeah with the pandemic we removed the option to help prepare food as a volunteer. You won't see that on our website. Okay, okay. But people can, what the best thing to do is to either email us, uh -huh. there's a link on our website, okay. to send us an email or call us. And then what can happen is, what we do is on Tuesday mornings, I meet with the new volunteer, mm -hmm. give them an orientation, uh -huh. give them a brief tour. It takes literally 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. and then they roll up their sleeves and get going. It's it's wow. not, it, does, it doesn't require a huge orientation. Okay. And one of the most wonderful things about Food from the Heart is that if you can't come on a certain day, it really doesn't matter. Just don't show up. If you have to leave early, you leave early. It's not a system uh -huh. where you have to sign gotcha. in at, uh, in advance. I'm going to be there this day and that day. No, we don't, it's literally drop in when you can, help when you can. It's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 8 till about 11 or 12. 
And so it's truly a very casual, easy environment. And everyone knows how to chop carrots or you know, s cut up string beans, green yeah. beans or whatever. So what they're doing is not rocket science either. And you know, it's just a matter of me making sure they know to put new gloves on between tasks. Don't reuse yeah. the chopping boards or the knives. Go get new ones between each task. All these rules that are basically mandated by the health department. Right, right. And that we follow very carefully. Good for you. So I would imagine, really, somebody, even somebody in a wheelchair might be able to help. Oh, yeah. And in fact, we have a board member who is in a wheelchair uh. who comes in. And we have actually, absolutely, we have the church is fully accessible. Oh, good. And then we would set that person up on a probably a lower uh -huh, table. Uh -huh. But we have another volunteer who really can't move around, but she comes in and uh, sits at a very specific table and does her thing every single day, every single Wednesday. Okay. She repackages the donations from Vons as one of her, oh, that's her good. tasks. And then she folds our, we make a menu for our clients every oh. week and they're so fun with the most clever cartoons. And we do have some samples on our website, uh, oh. but they're really fun. They're funny and, and and we just think for our clients to get, you know, a list of what's in the meal. So if they have any allergies, they know to avoid that in each item and then we fill it in with cartoons. We have a volunteer, Gosh. Gretchen, who puts it together every single week. Oh man, that, yeah, I think it's so wonderful that you treat the, your clients with such dignity. And I bet some of them may not have experienced that before. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really is a tenet of ours is, you know, is to, and the other thing that's really important to note about for us is that, again, most of our clients are living alone. They don't have family nearby, but they know they're going to see their driver every single week. Yeah. And they don't often see a lot of other people because they're home ill. And then our driver is sort of a connection with, how are you doing this week? Do you need anything? And then they'll get back to Kathy, our volunteer mm -hmm. client coordinator, and let her know. Or they may stop in on a Wednesday when they're picking up their route and say, hey, Kathy, so-and-so at such-and-such -such address doesn't seem to be doing really well, and I just want you to know. And if Kathy is concerned, she'll call the person. We have the contact of their primary family. Okay. So if we ever have a concern, we can call their family and say, we're concerned about your mother, and you may want to check in and, and see how she's doing. And so we're constantly the eyes for not only that the client, great. but also for their other loved ones to know that, that, that their loved one is, is okay, yeah. is being cared for. Of course, they have their, usually a social worker and their, their, their medical professionals, but we're just another pair of eyes to check in on them. That is wonderful. And to reassure the family that every week, guaranteed another set of eyes is yeah. going to make sure their loved one is, is that's okay. important yeah yeah so um food from the heart is a 501c3 nonprofit. Mm -hmm. a person can make a tax deductible donation yeah every donation is 100 percent tax deductible and um and we have some fun little things like that that happen too we have the Qu the quilters guild i think it's oh, called yeah it. yeah yeah they at the start of the pandemic, handmade masks, and we oh. gave all of our clients a handmade mask. Oh. They're now finishing up placemats, and we're gonna give all of our clients oh. handmade placemats. That mats. is sweet. So there's, there are other things like that. Again, it's 156 bags, but we have a volunteer, Anne, who uh, for every major holiday finds some clever container and then packs, packages it with little candies or some little treat, and we add that to the bag. And she's been having all of our volunteers collect toilet paper rolls because she's going to make, um, out of the toilet paper rolls, little firecrackers for oh. the 4th of July <laughs> and stuff, little candies, Hershey's Kisses or something in them. Yeah. So that'll be, and they're so clever and so wonderful. And it's just nice on a holiday to get something yeah. special. And the other thing we have is, for example, the Assistance League mm -hmm. is now sponsoring some of our entrees. So oh. every holiday, they pay for the, the protein for the entree. So for Easter, they paid for the ham. Uh, Thanksgiving, the turkey. Oh. Uh, just Memorial Day, they, did, uh, they paid for our ribs. We did uh, barbecued ribs. And then they'll do 4th of July. I'm not sure what our entree will be, but they're going to yeah. fund the cost of 
the entree, the, the that main is protein, which great. is somewhere between four and six hundred dollars. And I always let people know that because that's something else someone can say, can I sponsor your entree for the week? Even yeah. a small business could do yeah, that. We yeah, put yeah. their logo on uh, our menu. That's a great and idea. They can they can literally sponsor the cost of the meat to prepare that week's entree. Gosh. And we and send them the invoice and they literally just pay make yeah. the donation based on exactly what we paid. Uh, for that the cost of that meat or that fish so any donor can do that Beautifully. Yeah, it's a it's a really fun way to do it because they get then I'll send them a copy of the menu They get to see oh, what gosh. we made with their donation and again, it's just a four to six hundred dollar donation Yeah, it's not m major major donation, yeah. but it enables us to do something special Stephen, thank you so much for all of your great work and mm -hmm. for being on our show to tell us all about it. It's been a joy and a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>